Hey folks, I'm back. Back with more drawing. Hey now. <laughs> well, I am going to uh, do a drawing in my book. Uh, if you remember a couple of days ago, I showed you a big thick book that I draw in. Um, it was this book here actually. <clears throat> this big thick 600 page book that I was uh, showing you the other day that has uh, all these uh, drawings of girls <laughs> and um, I thought that um, I mean I did a drawing in the book of a girl but I thought I would um, do a little bit longer video this time because um, when I do drawings in this book um, I usually use some type of reference like I will usually have a photo that I'm copying from or maybe another piece of art maybe an artist that I'm influenced by or whatever. As you remember, I had drawing, a drawing of Mandy, which is one of Dean Yeagle's characters, and I had a drawing from um, Jordi Binet's book, and I had a drawing, I believe, from um, uh, uh, Robert Valley's uh, artwork. So anyway, I just wanted to show you how I do this and, and talk about it a little bit. So this may take a little bit longer than the other videos, but I thought it might be interesting. For those of you who who are drawing in your sketchbooks so and since this book once again was is devoted to drawing girls i don't draw anything else in it pretty much but girls um then you know i was talking about doing specific characters and specific things so anyway uh that was the sort of the point so anyway i wanted to uh, sort of demonstrate um uh, what i do how i do this and i thought it might be kind of fun to watch so hopefully you'll be interested in this one so, um, anyway, I thought uh, since I was since I've got the book here, I thought maybe I'd flip through a couple more pictures and sh show you more stuff. I think you'd seen some of these drawings, and uh, oh, this is um, this was of uh, gosh the guy Alberto. I forget his last name. This, but anyway, I was uh, this is an homage to him. <laughs> Let's see. And some of these are, are taken from photographs. And all of the ones that I've done from photos, I generally tend to caricature the girls. And then I don't actually make it look exactly like the girls. I usually change it quite a bit. I had a Robert Valley one here that I wanted to show you. Let's see. What did I do with it? Uh... With my Robert Valley. Oh, this is a drawing of a friend of mine, a young lady named Mia. She's a good friend. Nice drawing. Nice drawing. I'm complimenting my own drawings. This is bad taste. Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, this was this was a Robert Valley, but I have this one too. But there's another one I have that's a little better than that. Let's see. Oh, this is. Uh, Oh, yeah, um, James Lopez, who is uh, an animator, another animator friend of mine. I think this was taken from one of his books. That's input two. There's more Dean Yeagle. Let's see here. Oh, Frank Cho. Frank Cho. Love Frank Cho. That guy, my gosh, he can really swing a pencil. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Mel Milton, this guy is, oh, this guy's awesome. Uh, Mel Milton, Milton, you should look him up. Very talented fellow. Oh, and Rich Corbin. Uh, this is taken from one of Rich Corbin's uh, paintings. I really love his work. He's uh, the guy who did the Neverwhere series, which eventually was used in the heavy metal, first heavy metal movie, I believe. But he had an entire graphic novel called Neverwhere. Really cool. Uh, also, Frank Cho. Oh, there's another uh, another Dean Yeagle. Yeah, I always every every time I use any artist, I generally try to do some kind of thing to it just to kind of make it my own, rather than just copying it one to one. But sometimes I do. You know, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. 
because I like to see how other artists uh, solve problems. To me, when artists are growing, creating, uh, there's my friend Mia again. <laughs> I don't think that she knows about this drawing. <laughs> She'll probably see it somewhere. <laughs> Give me a hard time. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think it's more fun to kind of really play with um, the image, you know, instead of just copying it. You know, you got to try to bring something to it. Oh, here it goes. This was the Robert Valley I wanted to show you. It's got, I just love the way Robert Valley would do these crazy um, perspective things. And so this one, once again, I mean, I, I like the drawing, but I, if you saw the original drawing, I, you'll see that I didn't exactly copy it. I, I still changed it. All right. Well, anyway, you get the point. <laughs> I'm, 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 oh, and this was the last drawing I did. This is the one that you saw me do the other day. So I'm going to do a new one. And, uh, then look, look at, I mean, I've done quite a lot of drawings in this book. I, I'd say I've done like about a third of the book. All right. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use this book as my reference. And this is a new, uh, comic that my friend Nick got me. Uh, it's called Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. And the story and art is done by Tadahiro Mayura. I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, I like the way he's, his drawings, he does some really beautiful drawings in here. So I'm, you know, I'm, I like his drawings. So I thought, oh, this would be kind of fun to uh, use, use his book and use some of the images in his book. So I'm going to find one here. Let's see. Um, in fact, actually, I had one in mind that I had seen a while ago. Oh, maybe this one, actually. That's not too bad. Let's see that one, or maybe... Uh, let's see. Maybe... Uh, I don't want to go too risque. <laughs> I want something that I can put in the book that's not over the top. Uh, there was a drawing. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's got a lot of <laughs> a lot of kind of escape drawings. I mean, it's a funny situation book. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but uh, my friend Nick says it's pretty good, and uh, I just like the artwork. I think the artwork's really good. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this drawing in the book as my guide, and I'm going to take this and kind of play with it, and you'll see how I tend to make changes from what the original artist does. So, mainly because, you know, like I said, it's like, it's okay to copy what the artist does. That's not a bad thing. But I think if you can do something different with it, I don't know, that's just, I just think that's more fun. Like, for instance, in this face, the girl, the picture I had, the girl's face is, she's looking more shocked. And what I'm doing here, you can already see, I'm changing the pose. So, like, she's not going to look shocked here. And what I thought might be kind of funny when I was looking at the, the pose, I thought, well, what if I put her hands on her face? You know, see, because here in the drawing... She's got her hands down like this. But I thought, well, how, what if I put her hands on her face like this? You know? Change that, you see. So that she's got her hands on her face, and that would bring that shoulder up. Then you've got her breasts in here. Maybe just lightly rough that in. And down here... Now, I could do a different thing with her legs, for instance. I could, instead of having her legs go back, I could just have them go forward. Maybe have this leg come out a bit. Still have the hair kind of whipping around. And she's got kind of this thing on her shoulders, kind of covering covering her a little bit so I kind of like that I think I'll keep that except I think I'll make it shorter here maybe have it come over this arm and then come down so you can see see already I've changed the pose from this it says here she's doing this 
And here she's doing this. So you can see I'm trying to get something different out of the post. Now she's got the, you know, because she's in a manga character, she's got the eyes. You know, they love to do those big eyes. So I'm going to try to imitate what he's done here. Except I've got her looking up, see? She's looking up. And I think what I can do here is put the highlight in her eye. Because they love doing that kind of highlight thing on the eye. And I get that going that way. Yeah. And then, so both of those eyes, so I got those eyes looking up, see? But I'm still trying to kind of work with the style that he's drawn this in. And I use, I can use the, the image that he's done as kind of a jumping off point, see? And I can refer back to his drawing so that I can make sure that I'm sort of in the same ballpark with the style, uh, with his style, see? And here same thing I want to get that highlight in the eye yeah now she's got kind of a blush going across her face so I'm gonna kind of keep that I like that blush effect it just with a lot of Japanese characters they just it just goes right across their face sometimes so I kind of I'm gonna stick with that so you can kind of see here in the in the drawing, she, she's got that blush effect. So I'm going to keep that. But see, now that I changed her expression, see, if you look here, you can see, I think these are supposed to be her eyebrows, like way up high here. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to change that. I'm going to have her eyebrows be more playful. They're going to be down here. And she's got an open mouth, see there but i'm gonna and i have her open mouth but i've got her smiling see so it's a whole different effect so i'm gonna have her mouth open with a smile and we'll color the inside of her mouth but maybe i'll do show a little bit of like her tongue maybe have that be lighter so that kind of accents her tongue now her hair you can see her hair is a very simple kind of design. So let's see, we can mimic that. I've got her hair going in a completely different direction. So, see, I'm taking liberties. Now she's got... I guess this is, I'm not sure what this is here. Looks like she's got some kind of, I don't know what this thing is in her hair. So you can see it here. There's some kind of little thing there. It's in her hair. And I'm, I'm not sure what that is. So anyway, I'm drawing that. She's, uh, by the way, in the story, uh, Nick tells me that she's, uh, I think she's a ghost. Or she's some type of spirit. And in the story, um, there's a guy in the story who is a, um, I guess he's like a, he's a ghostbuster, I guess. It's his job is to um, exterminate ghosts or drive them out of your, whatever your place. And anyway, so, you know, and it figures that the ghosts that he has to drive out are these really beautiful girls who just happen to be, you know, spirits. That are in, and they're inhabiting, uh, what they're inhabiting is a uh, bathhouse. <laughs> very convenient. <laughs> but um, the bathhouses, I guess, are very common in Japan. Particularly in the, in the um, rural areas. And so this guy is given a job to, um, you know, I, I don't know what's the word, what's the word is it? Um, 
it exercise the ghosts out of there or something. I guess that's what his job is, to exercise these ghosts out of this uh, bathhouse. So, anyway. So, anyway, I'm, I'm going to take, you know, take some liberties here. You can see I'm taking liberties. But, see, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to use the style that this artist has and to see if I can mimic his style and yet still put my own twist on it. I think it's important, and this is where I think being, um, you know, getting the training you need as an artist is so important. You, you don't want to, um, you need to learn things like anatomy, for instance. You need to learn anatomy. You need to learn design. You need to get basic art training. Uh, there, there is no uh, shortcut to it. Um, you know, I mentioned something before about, yeah, you can trace stuff you see on the internet and all that, but you, you end up, what happens is you end up just being a, a, a slave to whatever somebody else has done. But if you know how to draw on your own, if you've got your own chops as an artist and you've done the hard work, you know, then what happens is you can be more um, creative because you're not bound by what somebody else is doing or has done. You can, you can draw what you want to draw. You can create what you want to create. And I think that's way more fun. Um, and, you know, it's, it's more fun. It's just more fun. You know, you can do more when you have those skills. Yes, it takes a while to get those skills. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, in a few days or months, are you going to be some fantastic artist? No, it, it could take years. I mean, I've been drawing for pff, most of my life. I mean, I started drawing when I was like five, you know. But I mean, when I took art classes, you know, it took a while. And I think I was a fairly competent artist when I first started out. But there was a lot that I didn't know. There's still a lot. I'm still, even this, to this day, I mean, I've been drawing my entire career. And I'm still, I still consider myself to be a student of art. So, and I think that's how you keep getting better. You keep getting better because you keep putting in the work. You know? If you want to be good at something, in anything... Um, you, you've got to put in the work. You, you can't, you can't, um, you know, soft pedal your way through anything. Anything that's worth doing is going to require that you put in the work. And now what, now that doesn't mean that you, you, you can't say, um, get to a place where, you know, you're competent enough to work. I mean, when I got my first job, I was not say, the, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I was, I say, I would say I was competent. I would say my work was all right. It was good enough evidently for me to get work, but I wasn't at the level that I maybe could have been, or maybe not needed to be, but I was given a chance. And generally speaking, I think if you're dealing with artists, uh, when you get hired, if you're being hired by artists, and this is the difference between the way things are done today and the way they were done when I got into the business. If you're being hired by artists, generally artists are going to see that you have potential. They're going to see that you can do uh, your job on a certain level. And they'll probably give you a chance. And then it's from that point that you then decide, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to be a better artist, so I'm going to work harder at it. I'm going to put more effort into it, you know. And that's where you start improving yourself as an artist. That's where you start really learning because the process is just going to take time. You know, it just is. I mean, it, there is, like I said, there is no shortcut. If you want to do good work, then you're going to have to just work. And you're going to have to work hard. You know, and it's going to take time. So you're just going to have to get used to the fact that, you know, you're not going to be at the perfect level right away. It's going to take you some time. 
But the good news is that you can reach a, a, a level of proficiency if you're willing to work and work work hard enough. You can within weeks get to a level of proficiency. You know where you know you can you can do some really nice work. And like I said, you know if you're working in, a, in, in the system, if the people that are hiring you are artists themselves, generally speaking, artists understand where other artists are in terms of their development. And so chances are you'll, you know, you, you'll probably meet somebody who will give you, give you a shot. Cause really all, a lot of times you need is a shot, you know, and you know, I've run studios and I've been a director at studios and I've done that. I've given people opportunity, uh, because I know I can see potential in an artist, you know, I can see, if a person's got a certain, you know, potential and ability to do a certain level of work, you know. So, you know, if I'm doing a job and I've got, I want to hire people to work with me, which I have done and I do still do, um, you know, I look for the person who puts in the effort. And I can tell when somebody's putting in some effort and that, you know, the work is, going to show itself, you know, it's going to show up in the work. It can't help but to show up in the work, you know, it's just, it's an, it's an inevitability. (laughs) So you can see here, I'm, I'm really trying to get this style and yet you can see I'm taking liberties See, to me, this is way more fun than just just copying what I'm looking at. It's way more fun. I end up with a drawing that I like, but it's in the style of the artist that I like. This guy's work, I think, is very nice. I like his work. I'm using, a, if you're wondering what I'm using to do the shading, this is a, this is called a paper stump. It's basically a rolled, rolled up paper. Um, I forget exactly what kind of paper it is, but um, it's a French, I believe the French artists were the ones to invent it, <laughs> I think. Um, but it's basically just a, it's just a, it's paper that is rolled up kind of like a cigar for lack of a better way to describe it but what it what it'll do is it'll it, it'll you know it has the same effect as you shading with your finger i mean and in fact actually you could just shade with your fingers it's kind of the same difference but the paper stump is nice because you can kind of they actually make paper stumps in different um i don't know what's the word different uh um sizes <laughs> whatever they they and they do actually they make paper stumps that are kind of like uh really thick ones like a cigar and then they have other ones that are kind of thin and i guess the idea is that you know they make them that way so that you can have a smaller one if you're doing kind of specific kind of work and you want to get you know a small you want to make a small kind of shadow so you want a small stump you know, so they make them like they make the pencils, you know, they make them different sizes so that you can, you know, shade <laughs> to different sizes, I guess. <laughs> you can get into little areas and shade little areas, whatever, I guess. I guess that's the idea. But you see what I mean? See, I'm not, you know, it's this, this is to me is more fun. And I could put a little design on the thing. Let's see. Uh, I'm kind of faking that. Let's see, maybe put a shadow in there. But let's see. You know, I could put 
some kind of just design. Just invent something. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do exactly what his design is. I'm just gonna kinda create something my own. Because that creates a little texture. And I'm not going to... I'm going to keep mine... I'm not going to shade mine in like his is shaded in. But I think I'm going to keep mine more hollow. Because all it, all it really does is it just creates a kind of texture to have the... Have it have some um, definition. Let me just have the hair kind of sweeping out. Yeah. I think I'm going to simplify the hair. I don't think I'm going to do as much shading on the hair. So, there you go. This is my homage to, what's this guy's name again? Let's see. Todd the Heroes. Uh, so I'll say homage. I like to I like to give the artist credit, you know. Because, you know, I don't want somebody to think that I just invent. I mean, even though I invented the pose, I don't want to take, you know, uh, credit for the character that he created. Todd a hero. Mayura. It's a mouthful. All right, so there's my there's my version of Tadahiro Mayura's drawing, and uh, that was kind of fun. So now that's a new drawing in my book. So thanks for uh, hanging out with me. As this one took a little bit longer than usual, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.